Kathy doesn't give up easily with her photos. Huh? <laughs> go, go. What does that mean? <laughs> That's so far. So we were talking about uh, the history of Tomna before, and uh, we wanted you to actually talk about it again on tape. Um, so could you uh, explain the history of when Tomna uh, was first formed as a settlement? Okay. Well, it's less natural than it was before, actually. <laughs> but then again, no, just start talking. It's easier. It's easier to talk freely and. Yeah, you want just um, yeah, just talk freely. So anyway, the the was founded, I think, in, in about 1200, uh, but there had been settlements long, long before, Bronze Age settlements and uh, early Stone Age settlements, and so because the river is closed, lots of fish, uh, fertile land, lots of wildlife, and so. But anyway, the, uh, the Polish uh, princes wanted to expand into Prussian territory, and so they invited the. Uh, and who were the Prussians? The Prussians were a Slavic uh, tribe or tribes, uh, which occupied this land for for, for thousands of years, and. Uh, so they invited the Teutonic Knights to uh, come and form settlements and take over the area and also uh, Christianize, convert the Prussians. Now, were the Teutonic Knights brought to this area to fight to, um, to fight destroy the, the... Oh, yeah, mostly. So they were well, brought, so they actually wiped out? Eventually they were. There are, no, there are none left. The language has died out. Uh, well, uh, was not uh, they were not here to simply wipe them out. They were was supposed to convert them, but in the process, of course, they would be wiped out. <laughs> that happened to the Indians in North America and everywhere, uh, or the Mexicans and so on. Uh, uh, so the Teutonic Knights founded uh, sort of a castle and a town, which was very common, uh, like the Romans. Uh, when, when new territories were supposed to be won, the first thing is you do you you uh, build a colonia, a colony, which was a town with a marketplace where the farmers could could trade, where people could come, where law could be established, and so so laws were established, and the laws were taken over wholesale from older towns. <coughs> the, the town of Magdeburg was the seminal law town for many settlements. And I think the Magdeburg law, I'm not sure, was transferred here to Kulm. And the Kulmer law uh, was used all over North Poland, it seems. So was Kulm really the capital of that? Uh, yeah, the administrative, well, yeah, the, at least the commercial capital for, for the, the, I mean, Gdansk was probably quite prominent too. And the main seat of the Teutonic Knights was in Marienburg. So this was, was but yeah. it was, a, was an important post. And there were other towns around. Uh, uh, Grudians, Torun, were other towns. Yeah. Now, how were the Teutonic Knights not an uh, empire? Uh, they, they, had, they had a little empire. I mean, but you, they still had to deal with the lo locals. Like, where did they, where, who had the power, the ultimate power in that system? Uh, the <laughs> Holy Roman Empire. Okay, so the Teutonic Knights were almost like the political wing of the uh, Holy they, they were, uh, This was a feudal, feudal system, and uh, the uh, the feudal lord of the Teutonic Knights was the Holy Roman Empire of German nation, so the German yeah. emperor. Yeah, yeah, okay, right, yeah. Holy Roman Empire. Right, right. yeah. So that's uh, so the the they were subject directly to them. Yeah. Right. But also they had, of course, uh, liege uh, a relationship with the. Uh, with the Polish uh, uh, dukes, okay, yeah. northern Polish dukes, and so on. So it was very complicated horse trading all the time, uh, as it was done till, till the 20th century, right? Yeah. Uh, so the Polish knights established this, and it was because all, on the, it was close to the river, and the river trade and, and the commerce and everything flourished tremendously. I mean, they, they built these three or four huge Gothic, uh, brick Gothic churches. Uh, within the first century, yeah. around right. 12, 1290 or 1270 or something like that. 
a monastery of the Kirtat and everything. That's funny because you always think of the Middle Ages as being so unproductive, but that's actually high they degree. They were very of... productive when it came to monumental right. <laughs> They were very unproductive when right. it came to farmers' hovels. Right, right. <laughs> and so, so the whole the whole energy that was left over by the farmers built was built into into castles. Right. Um, so I think they flourished for well at least 100 or 200 years or so. And then, because of wars, they, they were uh, taken over by this one and then that one. And sometimes they were more Polish, sometimes they were more uh, Prussian. Uh, uh, I think in the Thirty Years' War, the, the town was destroyed and then it burned down another time. Uh, anyway, well, when you they, say Prussian, you mean New Prussian? When there's the, uh, new Prussian, yeah. The, the old Prussians, I think by 1400, 1500, were, were gone. As assimilated if they were not uh, if they were not killed. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so in its heyday, the, the town was part of the Hanseatic League yes. with Hamburg and Bremen and, and others. Uh, but they left the league later on under the Polish. So I don't know why. And so there was a decline. And during the Thirty Years' War, they, they really suffered. There are still some cannonballs embedded in, in, the, in the walls at one point. I'll mm. show you. Mm. And um, uh, in 1770, I think I remember that date, uh, the, the town, or the well, town means also the region, uh, was uh, became Prussian. I mean, German Prussian, Prussia, Berlin. And uh, uh, from then on, it, it really was built up again. It became a garrison town with, with uh, army contingent and. Uh, Lots of Germans uh, came here, traders and so Jews, of course, uh, everyone. Uh, so it, uh, it began to to slowly build up again. Uh, there was the, the short interlude of Napoleon when it was French for a couple of years, but then it was Prussian again. And so during so, so this time was French at some point. Yeah, well, Napoleon was a French uh, emperor. So he, if you remember, he tried to conquer Russia and right, was defeated yeah. and so, but all of Germany and Prussia was, was subject to Napoleon. But there wasn't enough time to actually To do much, no. Right. <laughs> no with, within Germany proper he established Napoleonic law, which was very good, still yeah. is used in a, in a sense. So. And, um, and, well, okay, I knew nothing about Napoleon, but the... Uh, so in the 19th century, after Napoleon, this was really uh, was built up. Most of the houses uh, are from the 19th century, because before that the older houses uh, were burned down, I suppose. So the only thing of the Middle Ages that's left are the big churches and the wall. The rest is 19th century, mostly, and uh, some early 20s. Um, so it was was it was a German town. Uh, but again, from former times, there was, uh, was a large Polish population. Uh, so the, I think the relationship was one to one, to nine to one. Uh, when I was uh, living here, I had hardly any contact with Poles. So I wasn't aware that there were any Polish people. The, I suppose that the, the main street where we are on, and the marketplace, most of the business and the, the apartments were German. And the, where we are now, here, these areas, might be being more Polish, I can yeah. imagine. But I'm not sure about that. Uh, because I know that Antonia, uh, Antonia Kowalska, lived in one of these small houses some, somewhere here. Yeah, so, and Antonia was your name. Yeah, Antonia Kowalska was uh, Anto yeah. Anton, uh, yeah, Antonia. And uh, so the. Uh, so was was German and, and fairly well to do until 1919 when Versailles, uh, for what, with whatever justification, actually I guess none, the northern uh, north, West Poison, northern West, West Poison, was uh, given to Poland, and the Polish government immediately tried to make it to Polonize it completely, by well, well as many drums left and uh, so the German population shrunk tremendously um, and also uh, German cultural language and so on was suppressed and that's when my, my father uh, did some uh, secret teaching of, of German in but, schools. But during that time or maybe before that time his father 
came. Here, oh, how, Saxony, how we like came why, here. Why would you go from a German area to a contested oh. area? Yeah. Oh, well, my family, well, I guess, well, my father was born in Lignitz, which is Silesia, which is also Poland. Uh, and well, at that point, it was Polish, I think. Oh, I see. Right. And okay. uh, my grandmother from Frankfurt, uh, I never knew, we have to ask my brothers, that's a good question there, um, how my grandmother got to know this poor pharmacist. Yeah. And anyway, she right. fell in love, obviously, and uh, married him and was against the will of the family, as at least the father who was. But was he already up here when they met, do you know? Or I guess not, because my father was born in Lignitz. Oh, so right. they must have been down there. Right. So I could imagine right. that he, he uh, my, the, this grandfather was a pharmacist in Lignitz. And it seems what happened then is uh, the, they found this, this was for sale. The, the apteker here was for sale. And since she got money from her family, obviously, I guess that the, the way they bought the, the pharmacy. And they must have moved here by, what, 1900, a little, a little later, yeah. uh, around that time. So um, they and were... how far away was that from... from I couldn't tell you. From Lignitz? Yeah. Uh, 300 kilometers, I don't know, southwest of here. And at that time, was that Lignitz pressure as well? I doubt it. What? Uh, I think it was uh, Silesia, I think it was Polish, but I don't know the history of Silesia well enough. Okay, but he was still German, 100% German. He was, yeah. yeah. He was. So maybe, perhaps it was German at that time. Okay. Like, uh, it's, it's an industrial area, mining area, uh -huh. so we have, we have, to, have to check that out. Right? Yeah. Anyway, so I imagine they, they bought the apteca and moved here, let's say in 1905 or something. Uh, when was my father born? See, I should know, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I think 1905. Yeah, all right, okay. So uh, it was after 1905 when they moved here because right. he was born right. in England. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, so they, 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 they had the apteca. And, uh, and then my grandfather died, and I don't know when, but that can be established in the ABS, the documentation. So, so he died, and she took over uh, until probably with the, with the hired uh, pharmacist or so, until my uncle, who started pharmacy, was ready. And he took over. Uncle uh, Gav. Uncle Gav, yeah. yeah. So by. by he's the older brother, right? Uh, so he after. Was, he was your father's older brother. Yeah. yeah. No, no, younger brother. Young, oh, he was younger. Oh, I forget he was younger. He was the younger, dumber brother. There, there was a lot of dysfunctional thing between. So is it just the two brothers? Yeah. Well, they had well, the older one that died, right? There, there was one that, that died. Hans Hempel. Hans, Hans died. How old was Hans when he died? He was like four or something? I don't know, something. I don't yeah, know a better picture than of him on the calendar. Yeah. He died of some dumb disease, like chicken pox or something. Yeah. Um, That's the one that looks like Oliver. Uh, I'm not sure. I see. Uh, so, uh, so when when uh, West Prussia was ceded to Poland uh, in 19, I think in 1919 or so, uh, they stayed because they had, they had all their possessions here, and they didn't probably think that it was was a bad thing. And I mean, it was not. They were not prosecuted really. Just uh, no drum in school and uh, no drum stuff here and there and so. Uh, but they stuck together, it seems. And what did were, your dad do right here? I mean, other than teaching, like, he went to school that's here, what obviously. He did. That's what he did. I mean, uh, his, his mother was well to do. Yeah. So the money came from his mother, I suppose. Yeah. So he had no no fixed uh, no fixed address, no nothing. Did he, he live with his mother? Uh, uh, whenever he was in Chamber, he lived with the mother, I'm sure. Oh, where else would he be? Well, he would be in, in this village and in that town. Oh, that's weekend. what you mean by itinerant. Yeah, he was itinerant. He, he, he went around, he traveled oh, around. Wittgosch, I think he stayed in Wittgosch in Bromberg. Maybe he had an apartment there, you know, so. And this was in his, when he was in his 20s? Or uh, he, he must have been in his 20s. Yeah. So that was in the uh, 1925, let's say, to 30, you know, or even longer. Yeah. And uh, then in um, in 33, I mean, uh, often they traveled to Gdansk, and Gdansk was... Uh, 
was Polish but had access to, to German. I forget the, the details there. But anyway, so it, it was not a totalitarian state where they couldn't leave or so. My mother tells many, told me many stories about uh, uh, her traveling from Stettin to here over the border, uh, smuggling stuff like underwear uh, for my father. And the, the customs official found it and said, uh, who is this? Is this yours? Helpful. She said, no. <laughs> because it was men's underwear. <laughs> Uh, so she has yes, uh, some some stories there. Uh, also, always fa fairly amiable it seems. And she travelled forth and back with me. And so. And so they stayed. And uh, as far as family goes, uh, um, well, yeah, the, the the situation became slowly more critical because the oppressions of Germans by the official uh, oppression, suppression of German stuff in the north became more pronounced it seems and so there was resistance to that animosity and uh, the Bromberg thing as far as has been established nowadays is may have started by that a few uh, let's say parts of like Germans fired at a, at a Polish uh, army group and that escalated and led to a massacre in which well, the Nazis said thousands, uh, really hundreds or so, the Germans were killed by a mob. So it was quite gruesome. And some, in Helmut too, that there were some uh, persecutions uh, in the summer of 39. And that was one of the reasons uh, for, for Hitler to, to start the war, to, to attack. And my father must have uh, had a sense of information, because he had information with him from the right that something was brewing, so we went to dance, which was safe. And uh, uh, so the war, the war with Poland was short, uh, what, what, two weeks or something, then when the country was, was defeated. Uh, and uh, in, in, in Rüdiger was born in Gdansk, for that reason, because we are there. But you, you skipped uh, your own birth. Uh, oh, my own birth? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, that did happen, too. Uh, that was uh, in Bitkosh. And right. why there? Uh, uh, I don't know, because probably uh, by th at that time it may be that he had an apartment there. Oh, okay. Uh, that could well be that he was more teaching in Bitkosh okay. than anywhere else. But then before that even, uh, do you know what year he met your mother? Oh, yeah, that would have been in 33, I suppose. Okay. At, they, an, at an air show in, 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 in Dansk, okay. where, my, where they would travel because my mother, my grandmother had their house, their house, their house there. Yeah. And uh, actually, in that house we lived at the time when we were in Dansk. And this is your yeah. grandmother on your mother's father side. Father's side. The, 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 the other one, the Stettin. But they were traveling to Dansk too, obviously, because yeah. they had to meet. Right. Yeah. I don't know why, but... Well, yeah, well, to some extent was coincidental, and so anyway, they met at an air show. Yeah. Because my grandmother, the story goes, was leaning back and fell over. And then someone from the, uh, from the, from my, my mother's side, from the Moko side, helped. Yeah. So, anyway, they got to know each other, and they got married in 34, in Stettin, actually. Uh, in some, uh, close to Stettin. And then they moved to Helmno, uh, to, to Bromberg, obviously, uh, where I was born. Uh, and that was 35. But then it seems they moved to Helmno. Because when I had my ear operation, I must have been three or something, I guess. I, I was able to talk. Uh, so I must have been, let's say, three. And that operation was in Bitkosh again. Right, so they, they had contacts there, yeah. but when I returned and said the, the famous words to the to the city hall, right, uh, that was uh, at the, this windows that that faced there. Right. 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 The famous words when I came out of hospital, I, I'm supposed to have said, "Oh, my dear city hall, that I am allowed to see you again." <laughs> <laughs> I mean. It's a little strange. I don't know whether the, uh, the family myth was embellished or something. Because so, uh, he was only three. Maybe I, I simply said, oh, the, oh, the city hall or something. Yeah, right. So I don't know what. Anyway, at that point, we obviously lived there, right? Yeah. 
and uh, and then from there uh, we uh, uh, they moved to Dansk in the beginning of the war, just a month before that. And I remember we lived in the, one of their houses, obviously, uh, my mother. Now, I thought you had said previously that you lived in Bamberg. That's because. Can I? Okay.